So this is going to be our first video of chapter 6 and in chapter 6 we are going to be learning about what are called systems of equations. So in this chapter, um, at least for this video, you're probably going to want some sort of a straight edge as well as a couple different colors of pens or pencils so you can kind of use your notes to identify what's going on in each step of the problem. First, let's talk about what exactly is a linear system. A linear system is a set of two or more equations that have the same variables. For example, if you look at this first equation right here, we've got one variable x and another variable y. Now if you look at the second equation, the second equation also has an x and a y in it. Because we have two equations that both have x's and y's, we would call this a linear system. Now we are going to be learning how to solve systems of equations. So what does it mean to find the solution? The solution to a linear system is an ordered pair of numbers that will satisfy both equations. So the solution to this system would be an ordered pair x comma y that makes both equations true. For example, let's take a look at a couple problems where we need to decide whether the given ordered pair is or is not a solution. In problem number one, they're asking us to check to see whether the ordered pair 4 comma 1 is or is not a solution of the system of equations. What that means is that we are going to need to check to make sure that this combination of x and y values works for both of these equations. So first, we're going to check equation 1. Now in this ordered pair, the x would be 4 and the y would be 1. So what I'm going to do is in equation number 1, I'm going to substitute instead of the x, I'm going to put 4 plus 2 times, and instead of the y, I'm going to put 1, equals 6. Now if I simplify this, 4 plus 2 times 1, which I could do on my calculator if I wanted to, would give me 6. And since 6 really does equal 6, this ordered pair is a solution of the first equation. But that is not enough to make it a solution of the system. In order to be a solution of the system of equations, we also need to check the second equation. So what I'm going to do now is take the x and the y and plug them into the second equation. 3 times, and instead of the x, I'm going to fill in the number 4 from the ordered pair, plus, and instead of the y, I'm going to fill in the number 1 from the ordered pair, equals 11. Now if I simplify 3 times 4 plus 1, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 would be 13. 13 does not equal 11. So we would say because this ordered pair does not work for the second equation, that it is not a solution of the system. In order to be a solution of the system, it needs to work for both equations. Let's try example two. Again, in example two, we're being asked to check whether this particular x-y combination will satisfy these equations. So I'm going to check both equations. First, I'm going to plug the x into the first equation, which would be negative 2 minus 2 times, now I'm going to plug in the y, which is 1, equals negative 12. Now 5 times negative 2 minus 2 would be negative 12 equals negative 12, which is true. But in order to be a solution of the system, I need to also check the second equation. So if I plug in the x, I get negative 2 plus 3 times, and when I plug in the y, I get 1 equals 1. So negative 2 plus 3 would be 1 equals 1, which is also true. This time, the ordered pair worked for both equations, so we would say that it is a solution of the system. 
In example three, I'm going to try the x and the y in the first equation and see if it works. So the first equation, I would have negative three times, and the x is four, plus two times, and the y is negative three. If I plug that in, I get negative 18. Negative three times four, and two times negative three is negative 12 minus six, which is negative 18. So this ordered pair does work for the first equation. Now let's check the second equation. Six times, and the x is four, minus, and the y is negative three, equals 27. Six times four is 24, plus three, because two minuses make a plus, would give me 27 equals 27. So this problem also, or this ordered pair also works for the second equation. Since it works for both, we would say solution for our final answer. Now, this is how we check to see whether our solution that we identify is or is not correct. But how would you actually find this ordered pair in the first place? So let's say, for example, I gave you these two equations and I said, find the solution. Finding the solution using a graph means look for where the lines intersect. So, to identify the ordered pair that works for both equations, we are looking for the place on the graph where these lines intersect each other. To figure this out first, we would graph both lines. So the first line here would start at positive 2, and then I would go down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2. When I run out of room, I could always go up one, left two, up one, left two. It's important to make sure that you graph all of the points that will possibly fit here because we are going to need to find where these lines intersect and you never know where that might happen. So you want to draw as many points as possible so that it's easy to identify their intersection point at the end. So that's my first line. That's going to be the purple line in this problem. Now the red line in this problem is going to start at the negative 2, go up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2. Did you notice that when you went up 3 over 2, one of your points landed directly on top of a point that you had already drawn for the purple line? That means that we found our intersection point. So if I draw in my red line, I notice that these lines intersect here. The ordered pair for that point would be 2 comma 1 because to get to that point I would take two steps to the right and then go up to the first floor. So it would be 2 comma 1 is my solution because that is where the lines intersect. Let's try another example. In problem number 2 I'm going to graph my purple line first. I'm going to start at the negative 7 and I'm going to go up 1 over 1 up 1 over 1. Now the reason I'm going up 1 over 1 is there is an invisible 1 here by the x, so that would be my slope. I could also go down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1. Now again, it's important to draw in as many points as possible because you never know where the lines might intersect. So you want to draw in all the possible points. Now the red line here would start at negative 2 and you would go down 1, right 4, down 1, right 4. Right away I noticed that when I went down one, right four, one of my points landed directly on top of that point from the purple line. That means that that is the point that I'm looking for. So, this ordered pair right here would be located four spaces to the right, down three floors. So I would put four comma negative three. Now a couple important things here that students often lose points here you must use parentheses in your answer. If you do not use parentheses, you are not writing an ordered pair. It's not correct notation, so you would lose points for that. 
All right, let's look at the next page and let's try some more examples. Sometimes lines are not quite as easy to graph as those first two examples. Those first two examples were set up really nicely. What makes problem three a little bit trickier is that the y is not by itself in either of these equations. So first, I'm going to rearrange the equations to get the y by itself. I'm going to start by subtracting 2x on both sides and I get y equals negative 2x minus 1. So that is my first rearranged equation. Now my second equation to rearrange it, I'm just going to copy it down over here. I would start by adding the x on both sides and I would get 2y equals x plus 8. Then I would divide everything by 2. Now the invisible number here next to the x is a 1. So my final answer would be y equals 1 half x plus 4. Now let's start by graphing line 1. So I would start at the negative 1. I would go down to right 1, down to right 1, down to right 1, down to right 1. I could also go up to left 1, up to left 1. Now it's important to graph as many points as possible here because you want to make sure that you can find the exact place where these lines intersect. Now my second line is going to start at positive 4 and it's going to go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. But if I look at going up 1 over 2, I notice I'm heading away from the purple line. So instead I might decide to go down 1 left 2 and go backwards. And when I do that, I can see that I land directly on top of that point from the purple line. Now, as soon as I see that I land on top of each other, that's my solution. That's my intersection point. So that coordinate would be negative 2 steps to the left up three floors, so negative 2 comma 3. Let's look at one, actually you know what, let's stop here and let's look at one example of how you might have to explain your answer. So one of the things we're going to get back and we're going to start doing some more of is explaining our steps for solving a problem. For example, in this problem the first thing I would do is get the y by itself in order to graph the line. So in the first equation, I would add 5x on both sides and I would get y equals 5x. You could write plus 0 if you wanted to, but you certainly don't have to. Now for the second equation, again I'm going to get y by itself. So I would subtract 5x on both sides and I would get y equals negative 5x plus 10. Now I'm going to graph the purple line. Because there's an invisible plus 0 here at the end, I would start at 0 and I would go up 5 over 1, up 5 over 1. I could also go down 5, left 1, down 5, left 1. Now for the red line, I would start at the 10 and I would go down 5, right 1, down 5, right 1. Right away I notice that one of my points lands directly on top of the point from the purple line. So I would draw in that red line and my solution would be this ordered pair right here, which is one step to the right, five steps up. So 1, 5. Now let's write out our explanation. When you're writing your explanation, we know we should always start with some sort of a sequencing word, like first or second or third. So first, and the first thing we did here was rearrange the equation so that the y is isolated. So rearrange equation 1 because and the important thing here is that we use the word because so that we know we're telling why we did this because the y needs to be isolated which means by itself. Now the second thing we did was rearrange the second equation so we would say second rearrange equation 
2 because the y needs to be isolated. Now, third thing that we did. The third thing we did was actually start making the graphs. So, third graph line 1 using the slope and y intercept because the reason we're making the graph is that we need to identify the intersection point because um, we need to identify the intersection point. Intersection point. After we graphed the first equation, we graphed the second equation. So next, graph line 2 using the slope and y-intercept because we need to identify the intersection point. And finally, at the very end, we actually do that. We actually identify the intersection point. So, finally, the solution is 1, 5 because that is the intersection point. Ooh, make sure you can see all the way to the end. All right, I hope this makes sense. You're just going to graph some lines, find where they intersect. We will be learning multiple ways to solve these equations. So this is the first of several options, and I will see you tomorrow to practice this.